Welcome to the Filmed Live Musicals Podcast, a podcast about stage musicals that have been legally filmed and publicly distributed. The Filmed Live Musicals website contains information on nearly 200 musicals that have been captured live. Check it out at filmedlivemusicals.com. And now, on with the show. My guest this week is actor, singer, puppeteer, and writer David Colston Chorus. David's extensive credits include Walt Disney World and Universal Studios Orlando, the national tours of Avenue Q, Curious George Live, and John Tartaglia's Imagine Ocean, and Sailing the Seas with Disney Cruise Line, playing Olaf and the Duke of Weselton in Frozen, a Magical Spectacular, and Maximus in Tangle the Musical. Welcome, David. Hi, thank you very much. Very excited <laughs> to, to have <laughs> the person who played Maximus himself on our <laughs> podcast. And and it's a human, not a horse. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. We, it's we it's okay. Stable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that was it's the limitations of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the audition process for Tangled? So I always like to joke that I just went in and made horse noises. No, it was it was a bit more than that. Um, <laughs> so uh, this was back in 2014, actually 2014, and they put out a call. And Disney Cruise Line um, they actually do shows in rep. So uh, for me, that meant not just going in for the role of Maximus, but going in. I love that Disney Disney does this um, thing where they, they just ask you to sing what you love to sing. And that's where they start with their singers. Um, dancers audition might be a little different, but I'm not a dancer, so I can't speak to that. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I went in and I sang what I love to sing. And I think at the time that probably was Proud of Your Boy from um, the, the then cut song from Aladdin. But now I believe they put it back into the Broadway version. Um, mm-hmm. But... Uh, so I sang that because that's what I love to sing and that's who I am. And then from there, they asked me to read for Maximus. And I believe they might have asked me to read for some other roles or sing for some other roles as well. So when it came to casting this new show, they put a, even though you're doing for this show, it was on the Disney Magic. On the Disney Magic, they have uh, three main shows. At the time, it was uh, Twice Charmed, a twist on the Cinderella story. Then they have Disney Dreams, an enchanted classic, which they were also refreshing that year. And then uh, Tangled was set to replace something called Villains Tonight. So we had to be able to fit something in all of those. It's wow. a big puzzle for them, which is why yeah. they asked, just sing what you love, because then they're going to be able to, they're going to see what you look like, see how tall you are, um, you know where you fit, how you fit. Are you more of an actor? Are you more of a dancer? Because almost it, it can be very similar from cast to cast, but almost every time, especially when they're doing a new show, it's a whole new puzzle. So mm-hmm. for Tangled, they had me read for Maximus, which he doesn't have any lines per se, but he does have reactions. Um, uh-huh. So... I uh, was working with a voiceover uh, teacher at the time, and I I had to learn how to whinny and make horse noises. Um, (laughs) And, you know, I I think they didn't really quite know exactly what they needed on the page and what it was going to look like because they didn't didn't bring a puppet to the audition. Mm. I had worked for the company as a puppeteer. I had a pretty extensive background in puppetry. They knew it was going to be a body puppet created by Michael Curry, who did the puppets for Lion King, among many other things. And, but, you know, they don't bring the puppet to the, to the audition. So they said, can you, can you physicalize this as you might as a horse where the reader is going to read both. It was a scene between Rapunzel and Flynn. And I, I gave my reactions and, but I have a reading problem. So, so to, I, I, I asked if I could, you know, hash through and they're like, yeah, I, I guess so. But I was like, I just needed to like mark some spots and, and put some, some beats in there. But really, it really just came down to living, a living and reacting. And what's interesting now is to go back and see the show where I actually performed the show a few years later, my initial reactions are now canon. Um, they're set. <laughs> to the puppetry. Um, yeah. so, so it's neat to, to be part of that, 
the life of that, but they came from just reacting as you're supposed to in an audition. So was that's this how your I, first time originating a role? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, pretty much. And the same in the same year, I did get to puppeteer some other things. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was my first contract where I was really given that uh, opportunity to to set my own physicalities for things. Now, I didn't do it by myself. There were other uh, puppet specialists, uh, Disney famously, or or maybe maybe lesser known, but they have some of the best puppeteers that exist in the world, especially for live puppetry. They understand how to break down movement to teach people who don't necessarily have a puppet, uh, puppetry background. And they... In fact, they usually don't have someone who can do puppetry or who has done it before. Um, they might just have an aptitude for it when they go in. They might have an ap- aptitude for, for movement. Uh, they might excel in, in um, physical acting or they might be a dancer. And it's, it's helpful to be able to bring them in that way. But for me, uh, I, had, I had some puppetry, so they trusted me. <laughs> you mentioned you had worked for Disney before. What other work had you done for them? So I, I started puppetry back in the Voyage of the Little Mermaid when I was on the Disney College program back in the day. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. That was a blacklight puppet show. And then I – but I was, I was a bit by the puppet, puppetry bug before then. I just really loved um, – I didn't have cable growing up, so I watched – I watched a lot of PBS and it wasn't actually Sesame Street that, that really got me. It was something called The Puzzle Place. It was a short-lived show, but it was very, very good. And uh, my favorite character on there, flash forward many years, the puppeteer who was my who happened to be my favorite character actually taught me when I did the tour of Avenue Q. Um, oh my Peter Linz, who is, who is Walter in The Muppets, if you're, uh, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. That must have been such a cool experience. Oh, the whole time. And he, and he even knew that like, I cared so much about puppetry and like the craft, but also of that show. You know, I, I loved that show that, that show gave me, I mean, that show was about, you know, was it like, you know, six kids from different backgrounds, ethnicities, nationalities, religions, living in a, uh, like, like coming together in a, in like a little playhouse and learning about culture. So that probably shaped a lot of who I am, <laughs> I am and why I care about that so much but also just the puppetry it it, you know puppetry is tangible um you know for me i i grew up right before the big switch to cgi so it and actually i wanted to be an animator before then but um when things started switching to cgi i didn't really like it Hmm. i liked the tangible and i liked i liked that you could see the pencil strokes on the page and now you couldn't and you knew that someone had, had put that in there I, so I didn't I didn't quite come around to the the artistry of CGI until much later, um, until like it kind of like the technology and everything caught up with the ability of the artists, you know. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think I went so you know, growing day. up watching like Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, where you can like it's you know that they're puppets, but they're 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 so real to us, and they're oh, you, yeah, can, you, can touch you them. see the craft. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, you know, you know, and, and that's, that's actually, I think the biggest difference between uh, puppetry and animation is that you can actually see the breath. When, when a, when a puppet is, is performed well, there is breath and it's mm-hmm. because it's connected to the performer and a good, a good puppeteer understands that that is the first thing you have to do. Because the first thing that we did this morning was we took a breath before we opened our eyes, you know, that's what we do. And behind every movement, there is breath behind every emotion. There is breath behind everything. There is breath, which is, I think one of the main things that you could tell, like the difference between bad puppetry and good puppetry, you know, like it's, that's, I'm seeing a lot more of it on TikTok now, but, and which I, I love to see more puppetry and more puppets out there. But I, I just, I want to like reach through the screen and be like, or like whisper to them, don't forget to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, set up a TikTok uh, puppetry consulting service. I've thought about how there I might be able go. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, trying to, well, and that, cause that was, so you, you had asked about, um, you know, some of the things that I had done, how, how I got into puppetry. Well, I ended up 
you know, so it was Voyage of the Little Mermaid. Then it was, then I went away and did some smaller theme parks with one of my best friends that I grew up with who happened to also get into puppetry when we lived separate lives. Now we live uh, half a mile away from each other in, in Dallas, Texas. Um, and yesterday we, we were filming something uh, with puppets or, or actually with, with plush uh, stuffed animals for a company. But because we're puppeteers, we were able to do it masked. We were masked. Um, <laughs> though we have pretty much quarantined <laughs> together so that we could do stuff like this. Wow. But uh, yeah, the, um, yeah. So then, then I ended up, uh, you know, he and I worked at a lot of parks together. We both got into puppetry. We started building puppets. Uh, then I ended up in the tour of Avenue Q. Um, and then in the tour of Imagine Ocean from there, which was a really cool black light puppet show by John Tartaglia. That is now, uh, that was the precursor to, uh, was it Splash and Bubbles on PBS? Um, mm -hmm. uh, they were, they were shopping that they were, Henson was, was even came to see some of our shows when we were in Costa Mesa, California, just cause they needed to talk to, to Johnny. But, uh, we, then from there, I, I wanted to go and perform at Finding Nemo down at Disney. Uh, but I went down to audition and some of the puppet specialists there and some of the guys that I learned from, uh, were like, we need puppet specialists. Do you want to be, you want to teach puppetry here? Would you be interested? Cause we're going to have an aud audition and interview process. So I ended up going through that, moving down there, teaching puppetry, getting to teach for finding Nemo, which was awesome. Wow. Um, which also really got me familiar with Michael Curry's designs. Cause he built that whole show and that's just gorgeous. I love that show. So yeah, a lot, a lot of puppetry <laughs> before, eventually, you know, and I, and I, I loved teaching it, loved, loved, I love being like the building blocks of, you know, helping someone else to get this new skill, uh, in their hands. Cause, uh, you know, it's so cool to get to see that, uh, you know, that little moment that they, they get it and it, it starts to click, but I missed performing. So Disney Cruise Line offered me that, um, opportunity to be able to do the other things that I do get to use puppetry, but also get to be a character actor. Like, cause I, I'm, I may have a silly voice kind of guy. I, I forgot how to sing in my own voice for, for almost a decade. Wow. Um, but then just found it last, last <laughs> contract as I was, uh, you know, aged into being able to sing uh, more Disney Prince type stuff or sing from a bell tower, uh, you know, <laughs> so. Um, Dream roll yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was, that was really cool. So yeah. what was the process for bringing Maximus to life? How did you breathe him into life? Well, we had some wonderful um, puppet specialists there, like I said. Um, so I had eyes on the outside who had years of puppetry. One of the guys who was in charge of a lot of the build at Michael Curry was also coming back and forth because they were kind of adapting the horse to fit my body. I'm five, seven, like a, a true five, seven, not like a five, five guy who says he's five, seven. I'm five, seven, <laughs> like even, and, uh, I'm proud of it. Um, but, uh, but that, right, was rub it in. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little shorter, um, than what they had expected. I think they expected five, nine or taller oh, maybe, wow. for, for Maximus, uh -huh. um, which is, a, is, a, is quite a difference with that horse because I've taught some guys after, who have been five, nine and the back feet don't touch the ground because it was built for my body. Um, so we've had to adjust some things <laughs> to, to get Maximus to walk properly. <laughs> I, and I bet those five, nine guys have thighs of steel to make <laughs> yeah. an adjustment. <laughs> right. They have to widen the stance a little bit. So actually it was a lot of that. It was, how do I walk in this? How do I move in this? And for me, I looked at a lot of animation videos because animation and puppetry, they, they pull from the exact same techniques. They exactly, they animators are puppeteers, um, whether they realize it or not. And I, um, and puppeteers are, live animators essentially yeah. because they understand what what it looks like to to walk what it how how you break that down i mean we just walk as an actor we just walk and you know as a physical actor you might find another center uh you know center of 
of move, you know, where you're, where, where that movement comes from. But most actors aren't even aware. They're just like, I'll do a silly walk, you know. <laughs> uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll, I'll shorten my, my my gait. But you know, really breaking it down, you know, a, phys- a good good physical actors can be good puppeteers because they they are used to breaking it down even further than um, you know someone who's who, who doesn't actually have to do more of. The, I don't know. I, maybe that's well, yeah bad. because it becomes about like. <laughs> It's not in a, I guess, a traditional like hand puppet. It becomes about like what your pinky is doing as much as what your thumb is doing and how your wrist moves and where your elbow goes. Like it goes down to that minutia. Well, and actually, I think that's a good point because you know for this puppet. So there's a really cool video that um, during during the uh, rehearsal process, Oh My Disney came in and they did an interview, and you can find it if you just type in like Maximus Puppet Tangled the Musical. David, you'll, you'll find it's probably like the first one It's Oh my Disney, but, um, they, they show a really cool behind the scenes and I, I know Disney doesn't always do that, but I'm, now I'm hoping that with the Imagineering story, they'll actually realize that it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the magic to show this. Um, oh. it enhances it, uh, because these are artists who are doing a lot. <laughs> Maximus is a lot. You wear Maximus like a backpack, um, the back of him. It's about six feet behind you. Your left, your left leg is connected to the back right. Your your right leg is connected to the back left. Over your shoulder, there's a little tail pull. Um, uh, <laughs> then you have two different sets of bungees that you can clip um, the the head onto, but you're really holding it. The bungees are in place to kind of help support it. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you're able to control the mouth. You're able to control uh, the ears and you're able to control the brows, the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and it, it, different hand does, does different things, but also, you know, your right hand is, is supporting what the head can actually do while your left hand is supporting the, 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 the neck really. Um, So everything is working at the exact same time. And it's a whole vocabulary of movement that we're just not used to doing. Um, so even with puppetry experience, that's every single time, even a, the most experienced puppeteer gets into a new puppet, it's it's relearning how, you know, the, the basic principles of movement are the same. But yeah, after studying animation and looking at how they drew, how they broke down the horse's walk um, or gallop, uh, what 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 foot is hap- what foot is moving when and and how low the head is where the eye focus is you know and and when the ears are forward when they're back uh when they're mm-hmm. you know but then also maximus was animated to be very dog like so you had to bring in some of those elements mm. and they're obviously able to do a little bit more in animation than you can one person with a puppet uh, with the physical limitations of, but they did such a good job with that build. Uh, so I did that in 2015, but I went back and did it again a few years later. And I still, to the very last performance, was learning things that I could do with the, the puppet. And, I, and and if I went back for another five years, I'd, I'd be able to learn something new nearly every performance, which I love. Yeah. Wow. Oh, the intricacy of it. And then I'm thinking, like, I'm picturing, you know, you're learning how to maneuver this puppet and now you have to dance and do it in time and navigate a stage and be on a moving ship. But we'll come back to that. (laughs) Were you rehearsing in uh, New York City? No. um, So we auditioned, I auditioned in New York City, uh, but their auditions were were around the world. Um, Hmm. We rehearsed in Toronto because Disney Cruise Line has a Toronto rehearsal facility. Uh, since they have performers coming from all over the world, really, um, often the bulk of them are uh, U.S., uh, Canadian, um, U.K., and Australia. Um, but you might get some others from other other places uh, sometimes. But that's mainly where they they audition anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so we we had. We rehearsed there. It was a little bit longer rehearsal process um, just because we were opening new the new show and we had a few more shows to learn. Um, and then and then you get on the ship and then you – for this show, we weren't opening this one until the end of our contract, which was crazy. So we, we rehearsed 
like the bulk of the beginning in February when they were still changing music, they were still changing, you know, trying to find, you know, find the dance stuff, find the shape of the show, cut, cut parts of it, rewriting lines. Glenn Slater was there rewriting lines. Um, Alan Menken came like once, once or twice. And, uh, you know, we had all of the Disney, uh, corporate executives there, um, you know, the CEOs and everybody, uh, from <laughs> everyone from the cruise line, everyone from the company coming to see, you know, different versions of it. Um, oh. that was, that was a lot in February, but then we had other shows to learn. So we had to shelf that for, you know, some time. Then we got mm -hmm. on the ship. Then we were rehearsing with zero elements throughout the contract. Uh, we were, our ship was over in Europe and, um, we weren't opening that one until, October, November. So we had to keep coming back to it in various stages as we got different elements. I ended up rehearsing without a horse for most of, uh, the, for most of the time we were out at, at sea. Wow. But even then, once I did get the horse, there were so many other elements that had to be, um, plugged in and so little space when you're out at sea that I couldn't walk around with the horse. So, Getting my performance down really, I, I, I felt like I felt like I closed, the, I opened and closed that show without really having like learned what I could learn. Wow. I, like just because they, you know, they need the stage for lighting, and a horse can't walk around in six feet when <laughs> the horse is six and a half feet long. So, <laughs> wow. So, yeah. how how do you prepare your body for that? Because is is the horse quite heavy? Um, you know, it's it's actually. It's actually lighter than it looks. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, it's all about weight dis uh, distribution. The backpack you would think is is heavier, but they they've really found good ways to distribute that weight in such a good way that is healthy. That being said, um, you know when it when it clips onto the the front of the horse, you know we learned a lot about what kind of bungee you needed, how long the bungee needed to be, uh, for which. Um, which action? Because sometimes he has to sniff on the ground. And when he's sniffing mm -hmm. on the ground, it needs to be a longer bungee. But the longer the bungee is, the more you have to muscle from your, for me, you know, the left, left arm has to, has to engage. So it's really, it, it can be a little difficult. Um, you have to know which one to switch between for certain actions. Um, I, I learned which muscles to to work out before going into my second contract. You know, I, I knew that I would have to even it out on, you know, either side of the body. Um, I knew which warm ups I had to do that were different than everyone else in the show. Cause they're not wearing a horse for, you know, <laughs> off and on, <laughs> off and on, off and on for, yeah. you know, an hour for two, two shows, uh, when they do it, but no, it was, it wasn't too heavy. It's just about the weight distribution. And, um, and actually at the same time they were, they were starting to design, Sven in, um, you know, for Sven for the Hyperion version of the Disneyland version of Frozen. And then, which, which then translated very much in the same, um, design to d the Disney Cruise Line version that I ended up doing. Um, but I never ended up doing Sven. Um, uh, <laughs> <funny. laughs> uh, yeah, but so they, they used a lot of the, the same stuff, but then realized, you know, we don't, because Sven's got these big antlers, it's going to be even heavier. So they built, they built it in such a way that it balances so well. The only thing though, I will say was that, um, while it's still extremely expressive and you can get a really great performance out of it, what I missed was all of the free range of movement that I had with the horse head, which really became a lot of my vocabulary, especially the second time going back. I learned how much a, a horse expresses um, their, you know, their their themselves with their neck, uh, where where because uh, oh, it's so close to their heart, and and where where the movement comes from, like it it starts from their heart and moves up through, or or I guess I say heart because the uh, I, I never got to do. War horse, but they, I, I, I think I'm, I, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I think they called the, the performer on the front legs, the heart, um, because that was, I think that was mm. where that was. Um, so I, I guess I always thought of it that way. Maybe I was wrong. I don't know, oh, but really I thought it was beautiful. nice imagery. Um, but yeah, oh. that's where, you know, and, and for me, actually <laughs> fun fact, 
even though you didn't ask. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I, I've always said if I get a, a tattoo, I want a really cool, like stylized anatomical heart and lungs on my, um, my right forearm yeah. uh, in the direction that if I put a puppet on, it's the heart and the lungs, the puppet. I know that sounds really geeky, but um, the... Uh, I'm actually going to cry. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's such a reminder to connect with, like that you're, when you're taking the breath as the puppet, you're taking, you know, when you're taking a breath, breath as the performer, it's, you know, it's all connected. You know, I even, when I teach uh, puppetry, I, you know, the singers will, the singers will know this. Like when you, when you take that, that breath in and you feel the cool air on your soft palate. I, I am, I teach them to think of like, if you're doing a hand puppet, um, think of your, your palm as the cool, as that, the, the soft palate. So you like, do you take in that breath and it goes through, but it doesn't stop in your hand. It goes all the way to your lungs, you know, and, and all the way to your feet. So that, that to me was always a cool feeling doing the, the full body puppetry because I do, I do use my whole body no matter what puppet I'm in. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm using my feet. I'm, I'm feeling the ground. I'm feeling my, my lungs. I'm connecting. Um, I'm, I'm often doing the face because my, <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> my training does a lot of it did come from Avenue Q where you are in tandem with the puppet. Now, of course mm-hmm. you have to, you know, do that, but do it very subtly, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you have to tone it down when you're doing Avenue Q, but, uh, but yes, it's still connected and it's, and you are, you are, you are as much of the performance as the puppet is. So. Oh, that I just, that really got me by the throat. That's just so beautiful. That idea <laughs> of, and it comes back to the idea of like animation and breathing life into things and, Oh, just beautiful. So you, you rehearsed on land. You, you did this another con well, you did the same contract, but different shows in between. Mm -hmm. And then you finally get to perform tangled. What is it like performing on a cruise ship? I, I guess I love it. I, so I did tours before I did ships and what I always love is I, I think there's something beautiful about performing the same show for different audiences, you know, especially from around the world. And it's just weird that the world comes to you when you're on a ship. Um, <laughs> you know, whereas like, you know, before my, my way into that was I was on tour. So I was going to their world. Um, and you'd see how a, um, how a show plays differently in a different city on a ship. I felt, you know, the show played similarly, I guess. Um, in, in certain places, because you, you often had kind of the same audience, unless you were like in the in the Mediter- like the like if you were in the Med or the Baltic, it was slightly different because you were getting a concentration of people from a different cluster of of countries, you know. So so the same joke might not land, you know, but <laughs> but they still have that same. I mean, Disney does a universal universal story, you know, every everything they do. The, the reason for their success is because their themes are universal. So, you know, you're connecting. Uh, so for, for in that respect, it's very similar, I guess, but, um, but the, you know, the, the physical parameters, uh, the, the, the physical uh, differences, I guess, uh, on, uh, you know, on a cruise ship, you, you're, you're battling the rocking ocean. Sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's very different. Um, Sometimes you have to cut elements of the show for safety. Uh, oh, wow. Sometimes, yeah, just like, uh, you know, if, if there's something that would be swinging from the fly, uh, you might cut that <laughs> um, just so that it doesn't swing and, and, and or, or like cause a show stop, you know. Yeah. Uh, some, Disney has, you know, kind of such a state-of-the-art theater. Even on their older ships, they've got these these great lifts that they incorporate into every show and possible. But you know, if you're hitting rough seas, you might not be able to use the lift. So there is a contingency mm-hmm. for that. And it, it should never, it should never hurt the show. Um, but you're always like, Oh, is this the night? Is this the night that I'm going <laughs> to have to completely run up the other way and hope that I make the queue on time, you know, or, uh, you know, just the confines of, of, of ex- when you have crew members, you know, just the way a, a ship is, at least the old the old ships that I was on, you might have crew members trying to walk through the backstage area just because of the way the ship is designed. And you're like, I mean, 
they, they, they did get better with like trying to block it off, but people, you know, people are like, Oh, I have to go to the gym. So I'm, and they like try and like walk through and you're like, no, 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 no. We're in the show. We're, we're half naked back here. Uh, and yeah, I have a six foot horse behind me. <laughs> I have a horse. Yeah. Please don't touch the horse. <laughs> um, and they're, but it's, it's also kind of cute because they, they walk through and they're like, so confused because they've never seen this in process before they work on the same ship, you know, but they've never seen this aspect of, and, and so it, I don't know. I mean, it never, it never really bugged me. I thought it was kind of cool for them to get to see, even though they weren't supposed to see it, but like they're only, they're part of the magic too. It's okay. But yeah, you know, you, I mean, it's still, yeah, you know, you, you're, you're doing, you're doing all of this and entangled. Oh my gosh. The, the whole ensemble is just running back and forth, changing characters, doing, you know, going into, they're a thug, then they're a guard, then they're a, a townsperson, then they're, you know, something else. The amount of costume changes and facial hair changes, it's its crazy. It's awesome. But it is so choreographed backstage um, that if you're in the wrong place, you could, you could, you could down part of the show. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, someone's not going to make their, make their entrance if, if, if you're in their way. Um, yeah. Remind so. me which cruise ship you were on. So I was on the Magic, and then I was on the Wonder. Um, the Magic is the one with Tangled, and the Wonder is the one with Frozen. Mm-hmm. Uh, they both and- have Disney Dreams, which they're two different versions of Disney Dreams, um, but it's a very similar show. And yeah. then they both have another show that they do. And the Magic was the first of the Disney cruise ships. Yep. Is that yeah. right? Mm-hmm. With its, uh, the funnels are painted. Uh, what's There's something on the funnels that's special. The whole design. Um, so they uh, they actually put in a whole like request for for cool designs. How are we gonna How are we going to identify our ships? Um, but they settled upon really classic look, but um, they got special approval to paint it the colors that they did because at the time lifeboats were orange. They weren't. They had to be bright orange. But they got um, they got uh, special approval with like maritime law and whatever um, <laughs> <mumbo jumbo>. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, allowed them to paint the, the lifeboats kind of the color of Mickey's shoes. They went with the uh-huh. red of Mickey. Uh, they went with, uh, they went as close to black as they could. Cause you know, Mickey's kind of that this black and red and gold um, mm-hmm. and white. And so the, the paint that looks black from a distance is actually a really, really dark shade of blue. Because, you know, for safety, you don't want it to be black on the water. But it actually, I think that even kind of made it more, more uh, nautical, you know, just this really rich, deep nautical blue. But um, yeah, the the stacks, the, you know, the, the, they're, they're made to um, look like, you know, the, a more classic ship. But, you know, one of them is, one of them works. One of them is actually like there's stuff inside, like a kid's club inside of one, you know. But, oh, cool. Yeah. And they play uh, When You Wish Upon a Star, right? Instead of a normal yeah. horn. Each ship is uh, different. They have different. Um, oh. Or, yeah. Is it each ship? Or are they all the classic ships do? Yeah. That, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> Magic and the Wonder, I think. Uh, but the new ships have a digital uh, horn that can play more stuff so they can play like star wars and, uh, it's pretty cool <laughs> i think yeah, i, I, I think i've heard exciting, the dream for the fantasy I, I like the old school <laughs> it's cool yeah. it is neat when you're in you're at a port with some other ships and they're all doing their horns they'll do like a kind of a hello and and then you'll you'll do the they'll do the mickey horn and they're all of the people on their cruise ship like cheer <laughs> I've been reading that um, the the magic is currently in England um, because of COVID, and mm-hmm. it, I think it's in Portsmouth, and it's become a tourist attraction. Yeah. Obviously, no one's allowed on it, but it's this just giant ship in the dock that can't go anywhere right now. And yeah, people are flocking to see it. <laughs> it's cool to see. I mean, so when I when this when this happened when this all started, I was on the Wonder, and um, we we stopped in San Diego. And we were, we weren't sure when we were going to start again. My contract officially ended a month later, but they weren't sure if they were going to be able to get any, any cruises going. It just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, kind of what's happening in the world. We don't know. And it, and it changed like every hour on the ship, Mm -hmm. you know, like it, like it did really, I mean, it was changing every hour on land too. Um, 
but you know, you're on a ship and you can't get off uh, for, for safety. You have your stuff, you have food, you have, you have your lodging, you're, you're safe. Um, but we were, we were docked in uh, San Diego, just looking at the, it was gorgeous. I'd always wanted to go to San Diego. It's one of the only cities I haven't toured to. Um, but uh, I was so excited to finally get to explore San Diego, but, uh, but I got to look at it <laughs> a lot. You um, appreciate but, the harbor. <laughs> yeah. But people would come by and they would, they would, check out the ship and you'd wave to them and they'd, they'd wave up at you. And I think they even started uh-huh. making signs because we had some people who were on there for quite a long time. I, in fact, uh, one of our photographers couldn't go home until I think it was like two weeks ago. Mm. Um, uh, just depending on which, which country they were trying to get to. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, cause you have, when you're working on a ship, you have people, actually it's one of my favorite things about working on a ship is that you have people from all over the world and you're all working together and borders don't exist and you can celebrate each other's culture and you get to see like, Oh yeah, we really are. We, you know, what do we want? We want, you know, put out a great product. We want to do our jobs. We want to be artists or we want to be, you know, we want to help people. We want to make people happy, but we also want our, our friendships are, you know, from all around the world. We want to connect with people. We want to go and have, a, a, a drink under the stars at the front of the ship after after work and just enjoy the company of of each other you know at sea where wow. you know when you get out there and you realize yeah these the borders are lines drawn on a map for the sake of power it's silly you know yep. you get out there Absolutely. and you're, you're with everybody and you're like this is so much cooler why can't it always be like this <laughs> why can't we always be on the magic <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Being in isolation for, you know, six months. I don't, I, mean, I don't mean to take it away from theater, but I think that's actually one of the reasons I do theater is because you get to share these experiences across cultures um, and and you, you recognize what is universal, but you also recognize the differences we should celebrate and we can learn from. And it's, I don't know, I think, I, I think theater theater goers and theater artists um, kind of have a little bit of the, the secret of life figured out um, that we, we know how important that is and how it, how it changes the world in, in the best ways. That's, it's hard now <laughs> during yeah, these times. <laughs> six months in and, you know, it's, it's not looking great for our industry right now. No, which is, no, it doesn't. it's very heartbreaking. And I, I know this, it's not the same at all, but you have the video of Tangled, right. which Disney Cruise Line very kindly released online for free, which I was blown away by. And so yeah, I, I know yeah. it's not the same at all as being there, but we can kind of relive the magic. For sure. Yeah. For a while, I was not watching, I, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to watch things that were live, the, live theater. Um, uh, or uh, it, it was hard because it just was this constant reminder that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Um, that, and, and, and that I don't know how long it's going to be before I can, um, you know, this, that I've, I've dedicated my entire life to that. My friends have dedicated their entire lives to, um, and it, it just hurt. It hurt to watch. Like, I still haven't watched Hamilton. Um, even though that's a that's a really great version of of, of live theater <laughs> captured for yeah. for the you know for the enjoyment in your in your own home, I am glad to see that they put that out there. And and even though it was filmed some years ago, um, how how excited people were to dig into it because they had they didn't know about it, so uh, they they released it, and and I was just so excited to see, well to overuse the word excited, um, how excited people got, um, for it. And for Hamilton and or for Tangled? Theater. For Tangled. Yeah. Uh-huh. For Tangled. Just cause it was, it was theater. It wasn't, it wasn't the movie Tangled. They can watch that whenever they want, but yeah. this was, this was theater. This, there were original songs written for it. These were, you know, all these artists coming together to put on a show. Um, you know, does it compare to seeing it live? I, I don't, I don't think so, not necessarily, but does, is it a great gateway? I think so. I think it's a, it's a wonderful gateway to not only uh, Disney theatrical, but to all theater and all musicals that, that could be, you know, when, when we can go back and see live theater. Gosh, I wonder how many, how many families 
are excited to go and check out a show live who had oh, never sure. seen one before. Yeah. You know? It's, it's something, you know, I've, I really believe that filmed theater is not a replacement for live theater, but like you say, it's a perfect gateway. It provides access in a way like not everyone can go on a cruise ship and, no. but now we get to enjoy <laughs> Tangled. When was it filmed? This was filmed at the end of 2015. So right, right, right before and during our opening for it. Actually, a fun fact, you can catch, if you look close enough, I am wearing a wig at some points and I am not wearing a wig at others. Um, it's hard to see because I'm often behind the horse, but the, the, with the gorgeous uh, costume and, prop, uh, and, and puppet design, they did keep the, the performer visible. And so there's a version that they had where, where they filmed before they decided that they wanted to put me in a wig. Um, I prefer that, honestly. Uh, but they thought it might be neat to try and continue the look of the mane to come down to right where my head was, um, yeah. which I get, I understand, but I, I, I kind of think it, I always, you know what I felt like? I felt like in, in beauty and the beast where they tie bows in the beast's hair, uh, in his beard. And he yeah. gives that look to the camera and that that's how I felt. Cause I was like, Maximus is not a silly, it, he, he makes you laugh, but he's not silly. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a, he's a general like that. He thinks of himself as a soldier and he does warm, you know, but he's a soldier. Um, so I, I just, I, I felt a little silly in the wig cause I think it kind of softened the performer. I would have preferred, I liked that classic, like that there's the only, the only photo that I use <laughs> is, uh, is, is, of that. But um, yeah, so they, they filmed it over the course of probably a few different, um, few different performances so that they could get different angles um, and, mm -hmm. uh, and really kind of understand the show the way that it, it was, it was crafted so they could get a little bit better. Do you remember shots. the camera set up? Um, not, not completely. I, I do remember, and maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but um, I think they would have had, one or two set up in the back uh, by the booth, maybe one set up mid house and then someone who traveled at the, at the bottom over the course of a few performances. So probably the same couple, a couple of people doing the film filming, but um, yeah, as they got to know our little bits, cause if you, if you look at um, something like when she returns, you're going to see all the different angles um, and you're going to see all of this different, all these different, all this different business that each of the performers has crafted into their, their character. We, we worked for weeks on that, on that number. Um, and I think it's my favorite that was written for the, the show. It's great music, but the, the dancing is incredible. Connor Gallagher was our choreographer and he did, he did Beetlejuice. He did, uh, he did some others, you know, recently, very recently on Broadway, uh, just an incredible, incredible, um, not only, uh, uh, choreographer, but he he's also done some directing for for Disney Cruise Line, um, and just a, a great great artist. Um, and it comes through because he also allowed people to find their characters within and really every aspect and where you look on stage. That's the that's something you'll miss watching it unless you're 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 watching it live. There's so much that they they peppered in to all these different kinds of characters. Uh, in and now we have number. the joy of being able to rewatch it and focus on something different every time oh, we watch yeah. it. Yeah. I read that it was distributed on the film was distributed on stateroom TV on the ship. Can you tell mm -hmm. us what stateroom TV is? Sure. So um, when you go on a cruise, this is uh, so, you know, sometimes people, I guess the, um, so like when, when, when you're on the ship, you have, um, your, your dinner time is opposite your show time. Right. But sometimes people are like, you know, I really, I've been out in a port all day or I've been on the ship going in the pool. I'm so tired. I'd love to see the show, but I don't really want to go. So they have a version on their, in their, in their cabin, um, on, on TV that plays during the show time, um, so that they can watch. Now it's usually, it's not a live feed. It's one that they've, they've probably taken from the original cast of that, show. So for mm -hmm. us, that was, that was this, um, they, you know, if you go on to 
to the uh, the magic, you'll be able to see that show. Now, it's not that you'll get to see the shows from the other ships, but you'll get to see the shows that are on your ship if you're if you've chosen to watch it during um, during that that time from your from the comfort of your own cabin bed rocking yeah. in the ocean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a particularly uh rocky day. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's true, you know, sometimes it is a little too rocky and and people are like, oh, you know, I can't I can't sit during this, but I really do want to see the show. It's one of the reasons that people come on. It's one of the reasons people return to to the same ship over and over because they love to see the shows. Um and it's it's neat cuz like I've worked on The Magic on two different contracts. I've worked on The Wonder and I've sailed with guests who have been on multiple times throughout the, the, the cruises that I've been on. So they know me, I know them, you know, um, just, just from seeing me in, in the show, you know, they were like, wow. did you used to like, I, I always, when I was in the wonder, that was, that was interesting. Cause they're like, were you with, did I see you with a horse last time? <laughs> yeah, you, you did. <laughs> you did. It's that's so nice to have. It's you know you don't have to be at a home theater on land to to get that following or to get people that start to recognize you and build a rapport with. Yeah, yeah, and it's it really does. It brings it brings them back, and I I know it's something that Disney has kind of gone back and forth with because um, when we did Tangled, um, it was really a push to to make it feel more like Broadway, like the Broadway caliber. They they love the term Broadway caliber. Um, uh, on on Disney Cruise Line, but it really was a push to to really boost up their bo- their book shows, and and see how much of the story and how much of the costumes and music and and awesome elements that you can't see in the movie that close, um, how much they could get it live for you right right there. And they even they even had a program back then, or they were they were highlighting us in that like you can find me. The reason I can speak so freely about it um, compared to maybe some other things that I've done with the company um, is, is that it exists. My name is attached to this show in, in, a, in, a, in a public way, whereas mm. nowadays they don't have a, they don't have a, a program for it. Um, they, they do like the anonymity of it to some degree. It sounds like you've watched Tangled um, since it's been released. What's it like to rewatch something like that? Oh, I, I mean, for me as a perfectionist, I just look at, I'm like, oh, these were early puppetry things for me. Oh, this is not what I was capable of. I wish I could have seen this at the time. I wish I could have adjusted this, uh, you know, especially having gone back into another contract. It was like, I can tell how much I didn't get the time I wanted in, in the puppet. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, it's so, so apparent to me that I'm like, that's not what I was doing. Like, that's not the that's not as as good as I was able to to get that horse to move. Um, so it can be really hard to watch myself in that, but it's really mm-hmm. nostalgic to watch everybody else. You know, I remember I was, there were other parts of the, the show that I was supposed to do, but because of a, co- a quick costume change, they decided, oh, you know what? We, we designed this costume for you. You learned this, this song, but when it comes down to it, we got we to gotta put someone else in it um, because you're not going to make the costume change. So I get back in a six foot horse. You do, you know? (laughs) Uh, um, So unfortunately I didn't get to be the thug (laughs) who it was fun fact. It was Fang. I was supposed to be Fang and it's Fang does little puppet shows, which was like our inside joke. Perfect. (laughs) And, and also like when I, when I saw that costume design first on the, uh, on the wall, I was like, did Paloma, Paloma was the um, costume designer who's wonderful Broadway credits. But um, she, I was like, did she see my headshot? Cause like back then it probably was my more emo looking headshot. And like this character is so emo compared to the other thugs. I'm like, I, did she like, <laughs> did she like really like take that hair and just like Pete Wentz the hair? Like, <laughs> cause that's what it looks like. And this is our emo thug. Who also yeah. puppeteers. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, so I, it is weird to watch because I, I remember every, I remember every version of every harmony I ever learned for that show. And when I ended up, you know, after, after we opened, it turns out Maximus doesn't really have much time to sing. So 
I still was singing in my head or backstage just to myself, just because the music's so gorgeous uh, and the harmonies are wonderful. But you know, I it's weird because like, but yeah, you you remember those times in rehearsal where we changed this or we tried this or where Maximus was supposed to have a whole tap thing at the end after the uh, after the I think they were they wanted there was this like fun idea to maybe do a, a tap number um, after the bows led by Maximus, but I don't tap. Also, I'm in a horse that doesn't really move too well. They tried so hard to get me to tap, but they ended up cutting it early on because probably because of that, but also because they just didn't have time. People have to get to yeah. dinner. They have to switch the show over. You only have so much time to switch the hardest yeah. show that that is like one of the hardest shows for them to reset and then and load in and load out. That That is one of the hard things about working on a ship and I don't experience it, but you know, my – my friends on the tech crew do <laughs> every single night. So. And the whole ship becomes themed for Tangle, doesn't it? It does. They, or they dress yeah. up the, the um, restaurants in Tangled theme. Yeah. So there's like an Irish pub and that becomes the Snuggly Duckling. And they do like an enhancement where uh, the Stabbington brothers come in after after the show that night. And they do like this story. It's kind of kind of fun, kind of silly. But they do games. Uh Crew staff, they're they're dressed as thugs in uh, some some venues, uh, but it's, it's it's fun. Yeah, I I love I love that part of it, you know, because that makes it more immersive. You know, it makes it more of a, an experience rather than just okay, now it's show time. Okay, now it's dinner time. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the pool. You know, you're like, yeah. ooh, I'm 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 in Corona. <laughs> it's Tangled Day. <laughs> Who's gonna walk by? Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh. That's how wonderful to have been a part of all of that magic and how special that that performance is recorded for us. It's a shame that we don't get to experience the other aspects on the ship. Uh, I think that would be really fun. It would be a really cool DVD, like extras, you know, behind sure. the scenes, showing that footage of how Maximus came to life and then how the ship is, how the <laughs> Irish theme pub becomes the Snuggly Duckling. Like It would be really fun for audiences at home. I think that would sell tickets on Disney Cruise Lines. Yeah. For people uh, you to know, be able I mean, to see that magic. I guess, you know, to some degree, there's some things that they, I, I guess, you know, what's, what's wonderful is that like, and you know, I think most true Disney fans know, even though, you know, whether they've been to the parks or not, they know that they can see something different at each park. They know that they can see something different um, when they turn on Disney plus or when they, you know, go on the ship or when they go on adventures by Disney, which is just an adventure themed, ex like, real life traveling, uh, but led mm -hmm. by Disney, um, Disney tour guides, you know? So you have that customer experience, you know, service experience that you, you get at Disney. Um, you have that extra knowledge, you have that, you know, just that extra magic along the way, you know, they, they know what they're doing. They, they know what they're doing, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I agree. I, I'm all for show as much as you can, uh, so that the people who, who can't, get a little bit of it, you know, at least, you know, cause I don't like that exclusivity of, of, of theater sometimes, you know, like the, mm -hmm. the, the ridiculous ticket prices for some of the shows on Broadway that now we can't people who, who can really, whose lives can be changed as opposed to someone who's just going because, well, I'm supposed to see this show because that's the hot new show, you know, <laughs> like it's, I, I they and they're not really getting anything out of it, but it could change the life of someone who, who doesn't normally get to see theater because they don't have the money for a ticket, you know. So I have a series of quick questions for you. Okay. Don't think about it. Whatever comes to mind is good, and there are no wrong answers. So there's no no deliberating in between. <laughs> okay, so just just keep it simple, which is hard for yeah. someone like me who talks a lot. <laughs> I, it's, That's it's good. Totally fine. That's, I That's keep good. the caveat at the beginning. <laughs> Do you have a favorite musical? Probably Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, and it was it just we're recording this on the twenty fourth, but it was just September twenty first, not not mm, long ago, a few right. days ago. <laughs> That's right. That's why I was seeing all the Little Shop posts. That makes sense. I've lost some. <laughs> dates and time and uh, yeah i've been home for six months wow <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite filmed live musical tangle the musical no <laughs> um. <laughs> excellent answer <laughs> yeah everyone if, <laughs> if a film of 
when we film live theater, it's not exactly theater and it's not exactly a film. So what should we call it? Oh, goodness. I think it's, I would say it's something like, I guess, a digitally immersive theatrical experience. I don't know. <laughs> something like <Yes>. that. <laughs> that is, I want to steal that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where do you stand on bootlegs? Ooh, um, try to keep this short. Uh, there is, artists should be paid for what they, they have done. That being said, they can be a powerful gateway for people who do not have the means to see, um, which will have a long-term positive effect um, on our community. So it's gray. It's very gray. I want people to get paid for what, they, what they've done. But I also want our theater community to grow and change lives. And uh, I'm hopeful that we'll see more positive from people having bootlegs than the negative. Mm -hmm. What do you wish had been filmed? I don't know. What's, uh, you, can, you can see a lot of stuff at the Lincoln Center Library. <laughs> so I probably would say something and someone would be like, I, no, no, you could go and see that at the Lincoln Center Library. For, for those but who at don't the moment, know. We can't see, we can't go to the library That's and true. people who don't live in New York City and who aren't, yeah. Uh, don't have like a, a valid reason in inverted commas because you're supposed to have like it's for research purposes so if you're just you know right. someone that just wants to see it like because i want to see it that's not a valid reason and that's you can true. only watch it once mm -hmm. like there there's very strict rules around it and for good reason and i yes. like love that the archive at the new york public library it's an amazing resource but for the yeah. everyday person they that's don't true have the only times that i've used it have been for for a show that i was about to do uh, cause I had to design hand to God and I was going to be in hand to God mm. and I got to see it and that was wonderful. Um, yeah. Uh, mm, I don't know if I have a true answer for that one. That's okay. We'll yeah. skip to what would you like to see filmed in the future? What would I like to see filmed? In the you know, I would love to see, I would love to see more immersive experiences utilize the technology that we have uh you know i think uh i think there are people out there doing doing some cool things with like uh with 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 um uh, you know 3d uh or or what's the when you the, virtual the, reality virtual reality that's the word i'm looking for uh I, I wanted to say augmented reality but that's another thing that i i think is really cool um yeah to enhance uh even even just traveling through like augmented reality so you know you can shine uh you know open up your phone and uh you're at a national park and something pops up and and there's more that that comes alive right there history comes alive you know if right you there. have a spare i think it's 45 minutes long uh episode three, I want to say, of the Film Life Musicals podcast is with mm -hmm. Lena Wolf, who is a dancer and a uh, engineer. And her thesis was on virtual reality and dance. Yeah. And so we did, we had a whole chat about virtual and augmented reality. And it was fascinating that That's what, what the possibilities are like right now and what we could have in the future. It's so exciting. Yeah. I think it's our responsibility. You know, they're, they're all different different areas of, you know, I don't think it's every, everyone needs to get on this, but I think those who are interested and those who can another way, I think it's, I think it's all of our responsibility, responsibility to grow our community. But I think that's a, that's a great way because you, you will connect with younger audiences. You know, I don't, I don't subscribe to the, uh, to the notion that theater, theater is a dying art form or, or even puppetry is a dying art form. Um, you know, I don't like, I don't like, no, that's a, that's a cop out. You just aren't finding a way to make it relevant for today. Mm -hmm. You're, if you, if you actually think that, I, I mean, I get, I get why people might think that to some degree, but, but that just means they haven't, haven't thought outside the box. It's time to think outside the box. And I think that's a great way. I'm glad she's doing that. And I will Literally check that out. outside the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a heads up. <laughs> right. Okay. Where can we find you online? Definitely at David Colston Chorus on Instagram. I'm trying to learn to use that more. I've been updating as I've been building some puppets for a project that I'm creating. 
with my best friend. And um, yeah, I, I have not utilized TikTok yet, um, but I might try to eventually. Uh, but I would say David Colston Chorus on Instagram. Yeah, that's a good way. Well, David, thank you so much. This was such a wonderful chance to be to dive into some Disney magic and to peek behind the curtain a little bit. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you for having me. This was it's fun. It's my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. My pleasure. Filmed Live Musicals is a labor of love, and we'd like to thank everyone who makes it possible. Thank you to our patrons, Josh Brandon, Mercedes Esteban, Jesse Rabinowitz and Brenda Goodman, Al Monaco, David and Catherine Rabinowitz, and Beck Twist for your support. If you'd like to support Filmed Live Musicals, please like and review on your podcast app. Find us on Twitter at Musicals on Screen and on Facebook at Filmed Live Musicals. If you'd like to support the site financially, you can find us at patreon.com forward slash musicals on screen. No matter what level you're able to pledge, you'll receive early access to written content and early access to this very podcast. Visit www.filmedlivemusicals.com to learn more. Thanks for listening.